How cool is that? This was sent to me by Welta Bulapan. She makes these aprons really cool. I'll leave a link for her website in the description down below. Thank you, Welta. Speaking of artists, today I'm gonna make the artist special. And this is quite possibly my favorite riff on a whiskey sour. It's absolutely wonderful. And this was one of my favorites to introduce people to at the bar because everybody loves it, everybody. Truly one of my favorites. I say that about so many cocktails because they're all so good, but this really is one of my all time favorites. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more sips, tips, and recipes. Now let's go make the artist special. To the bar, to the bear. The original recipe for the artist special dates back to the 1920s in Paris, France specifically a place called the Artist Club, which was located in kind of a rough neighborhood that was close to the Moulin Rouge, but artists flocked there. At least that's what I read. They had a thriving jazz scene. You had burlesque shows. There were just lots of musicians, artists, poets, and it just sounds like it was an awesome place to be. Maybe they all went there because the drinks were so good. I don't know, probably not. First print of the cocktail recipe is in 1927 in Harry Macalone's Barflies and Cocktails. But then three years later in 1930, we see it in Harry Craddock's The Savoy Cocktail Book. And the builds are the same. It's really simple, but there's one ingredient that is rare enough just to keep it from being made everywhere. That's my belief. And that is an ingredient called grossier. Grossier. Grosseille. 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 I'm just gonna call it red currant syrup. There aren't really that many drinks that call for red currant syrup. It's hard to source, at least for me here in Chicago. At the bar, we had to have this cocktail on the menu. So we made our own rosé that was made up of black currant juice and pomegranate juice, and it worked really well. But I was lucky enough to find frozen red currant concentrate. So this is actually gonna be more closely resembling a true rosé. I'm excited about it. But if you can't find red currants, that's okay. A really tart pomegranate grenadine is gonna work beautifully. So don't be discouraged. You have to try this drink. All right, so first thing you're gonna wanna do, if you're gonna make the syrup that I am, I'm gonna reconstitute the red currant concentrate. If you're able to find 100% red currant juice, you can skip this step. Now for me, the directions were on the bottle. In this case, it was one part concentrate to 6.83 parts water. I did that by weight. Now I imagine that different brands are going to call for different ratios, so adjust as needed. And it turns into a nice, bright, tart juice. To make the syrup, you'll need one cup of the red currant juice and one and a half cups of white sugar. Then over low heat, stir to combine, and once the sugar's dissolved, the syrup's complete. Don't let it boil. Once the sugar's dissolved, take it off the heat and add one quarter of a teaspoon of rose water. The rose water is not traditional, but I really like it in the syrup. It just opens it up, but it's not enough rose to make it taste rosy. You have to try it to see it. It's really good. It's what I do with the grenadine too. That's it. We have our syrup. So now we can make this cocktail. Everybody's still with me? Now the booze. Oh, also at this time, get your glass, we're chilling. We're gonna shake it and serve it up. Now the booze. We're gonna need bourbon, sherry, fresh lemon juice, and red currant syrup. Rosé. It sounded pretty good to me. The bourbon I'm using is Old Granddad Bonded, and the sherry is Lustau Amontillado Los Arcos. For the whiskey, Harry Macalone called specifically for scotch, and that will be great in the drink because it gives a nice smokiness that will go really well. I've just come to love this drink with bourbon. I'm using a little bit higher proof, and it's gonna hold up to the sugar and the citrus. For the sherry, we want a drier sherry because we don't want this drink to get too rich. I'm using an Amontillado because it's what I have on hand and I really like it in this drink, but it's gonna be great with an Oloroso or if you wanna go really dry and have a Fino sherry, it's gonna be great. Just a reminder, if you have a dry sherry, store it in the refrigerator once it's opened. It's best enjoyed fresh and unless you plan on polishing off a whole bottle, put it in the fridge. Let's build. Let's start with the bourbon. We'll do one ounce of bourbon one ounce of sherry, then three quarters of an ounce of your red currant syrup, and another three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. See, that was easy. Now we can add ice and shake. We're gonna give it a shake for about 10 seconds or so.
That looks good. Now grab your chilled glassware, double strain into the cocktail glass. At this point, you could add a nice lemon twist. I like it with nothing. I'm a minimalist with this one. So however you wanna garnish it, it's gonna be great. The artist special. Cheers. Yeah, this is my favorite riff on a whiskey sour. It is just awesome. We talk so much about the red currant syrup, but really what makes this drink so special is the sherry. The sherry gives it a nice nuttiness and almost like a savory element. Definitely have the bourbon, whatever whiskey you choose to use, so you know you're drinking a whiskey cocktail. I can't say enough about it. It's just really good. Awesome. Yes, please. Oh man. Yeah. So good. Absolutely wonderful. Make this, hope you love it. See you next time. Cheers.